Hey guys, it's Delora Devils here, and um, it was an extremely slow night at work, so my makeup still looks fabulous. And while I didn't make any money at the club, somebody did hit my car. So not only did I waste six hours and all this makeup, but someone also hit my car. I think the universe is telling me that that's probably not a very good club to work at. So I'm gonna stop working there. Anywho, so because I'm all dolled up and I don't want to waste a good face, I figured let's go ahead and do an artist spotlight and let's do it on Patrick Valenza, one of my absolute favorite artists. And we're going to start with the tarot that everybody knows, the Deviant Moon Tarot. This is actually a metal tin that I found at Goodwill and it was purple and had cats on it. You can still see kind of like the purple. <laughs> I just painted it. Um, anywho, I glued part of the tuck box onto the inside flap because it was a bunch of kittens and I was like, I don't want to ruin my vibe with kittens. But I did leave the interior the same because I didn't want any paint to rub off on my cards. So, uh, as you guys can see, I have the borderless edition. I love the borderless edition. And the edging I did in brown, but I did like this gold that kind of, to kind of like make it look like wood grain and it actually turned out really well. Anyway, my modifications aside, this is one of my favorites. Okay. Because again, I really, really like tarot decks that do something different with the miners. And I love tarot decks where the court cards really feel like, like there's a person there. Like I look at this King of Wands and I'm like, that's a family man. You know what I mean? That might not be the interpretation of the King of Wands in every deck. That's why you have multiple decks. But in this particular deck, I see the King of Wands and I'm like, mm, this is, this is a family man. He's very tied to his family. If he doesn't have children, that's what he wants. Right. And it's just, another reason to just fall in love with this deck. Um, the art style, of course, is just one of my favorite things. And the textures on this are actually taken from different cemeteries, uh, an abandoned insane asylum. So like all of the brick, all of the texture, I think is what makes a lot of people drawn to this deck because it's like, it's digital art, but it's got like a texture on it. And even the backings have that like cracked paint texture. I gotta hide my face so it'll zoom in. Whatever. You guys have seen this deck probably a hundred times if you like Patrick Valenza. Let's move on to his other tarot deck. This one I have in one of those like generic boxes you can find at witchy shops. So here we go. What I did differently is because I do have the beast pack for this deck is that I made a little see-through tuck box here. And I velcroed it. Unvelcro that without waking the entire house up. So this is the top lid. So I can literally have my alternate majors up here. And then I have the full deck down here. And like I said, the beast pack is, it's super fun. So let's see if we have any beasts in here. Is this the one that I used last here? So yeah, it's just, it's really, really cool. He had an idea based off of a deck that they found somewhere in Europe. I'm not going to pretend to remember, but that's where he got the idea from is that it was a tarot deck where the majors were all like wild, like mythical creatures. So he made his own like really crazy looking mythical creatures. I thought that was really fun. And of course, uh, I think I did a video where I showed that I had all of the alternate cards that came with this deck, like ever, right? Um, as for the deck itself, I'm not gonna go through and show you guys all of that. I will try to link that video. I'm so bad at doing that, but I will try to remember to do that. Um, but as a whole, again, with this deck, um, the Page of Swords, that little guy, there's a lot going on here. You know what I mean? Like you could say that he is very brash and doesn't have a lot of empathy, right? Um, 
Or you could say that like, oh, somebody's in danger right now. Like literally you can read so much into these cards. And also the pips. So this is the three of cups. Now, of course, this is Marseille style. So it's not going to be the three maidens holding up a cup. It is two empty cups and one full cup on top. There's an eyeball looking at you. There are so many different ways that you can interpret that, right? There are lots of fun ways to do that. And then here we have the coins and the filigree is different on the different coins. So you're not going to have the exact same looking flowers and filigree. And even the faces on the coins look different. Even the faces look different. And uh, it's funny, this card pops up. When I did my unboxing of the Beast Pack, this one actually had a blue backing. He had to send me another one with a red backing. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a very, very fun Marseille deck. It, uh, I have a JJ Swiss that's very, very old that I don't use a lot. So having a fun and like timeless feeling Marseille deck like it's old but it's not old you know what I mean like it has that aesthetic and it's really nice it's really nice I enjoy uh playing with this one and learning to read Marseille and uh pip based decks with that now I will say Patrick Valenza I already pre-ordered it He's coming out with an illustrated pips. This is called the Triomphi Della Luna deck, and he is doing an illustrated pips. I already pre-ordered it. It should be shipping out at the end of this month, so I cannot wait to unbox that and enjoy that experience with you guys. Anyway, let's get on to his Oracle decks. This is a whole artist spotlight. We have the Mildred Payne Oracle of Black Enchantment. And what really drew me to this one is all of the, the art style is like woodblock prints. They look like woodblocking prints. Um, and definitely quite a few of them. My mom has books on like the history of the occult and stuff that she let us read as kids. And there are a few in here that really do look like um, period pieces. And there's a lot of cards like this one. This one looks straight out of, out of a historical woodblock print. This one looks straight out of a historical woodblock print. It just has that weird Valenza touch to it. That weird Patrick Valenza twist. And um, this is a very fun one. Uh, I would, I will say that this deck tends to be darker to me when I do a reading. I don't know if anybody else with this particular Oracle deck, but this one gives some really not so uplifting answers. And it's not that it lacks the vocabulary for an uplifting answer. It's just that it's always like, I pick up a picture and I'm like, <laughs> you know, but but sometimes in order to see all facets of a situation, you need a deck like that. You just need a deck like that. And these cards are absolutely huge. It's another reason why I like this deck a lot. Um, you can still riffle them too, so that's super fun. Um, the next one is the Abandoned Oracle. Now this one has a lot of really fun dark cards as well as light cards. I used to do my daily draws with specifically this deck only for a couple of years actually. It wasn't until I moved here. Oh my god, why do I have the hiccups? I had a few drinks earlier tonight, but not enough for me to be all Dumbo hiccuping all over the place, but whatever. So... Yeah, whenever you read this deck with reversals, it really, really shines. Like, it really, really shines. Let's just have some fun here. Okay. Oh, the cyclist. This is one of my stalker cards in this deck, but literally it's like... You're doing, 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 and whenever you do finally get inspiration to do something, it's gone before you can stop to get it. That's so me. That is 
so me. I should have just relaxed tonight. I shouldn't have gone to work. Shouldn't have wasted my time and my energy going to the club just to make zero dollars and get my car hit by a stranger. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to move on to the Mildred Payne Pocket Oracle. And actually, let me show you guys this box. So every time that I have found like a reusable box, I try my darndest. I'm not a very good painter, but I try my darndest to paint the card backing onto the box. So let's look at the card backing for this one. Let's compare and see how I did. You get the general idea, and you know what? That's good enough. But this this box is really cool because you see some decks, some of the older decks come like this. But this is literally the box from the magnet in my car. Like I have just a little magnet that I can stick my phone to in the car, and this is what it came from. The brand is Fit Fort, and that's a, that's a damn good magnet. It's a damn good magnet, and they come in a damn good box. So I literally have all of the extra cards, all of the little extra goodies in here, and these cards are super, super small. Uh, that being said, I do not travel with these. I do not use these out in public at all. These are purely for at home. They're so cute, but... I don't get accurate readings with them, but it's probably because there's so many cards and I haven't really connected to each card and really done the work to get to know the deck. So, <coughs> choked on my own spit. <coughs> this is what I get for filming at 3 a.m. Anyway, so, anyway. <laughs> and I've been vaping all night like a bad person. Anyway. But yeah, I haven't really connected to this deck much. And if there's one thing I want to do, it's try to connect to that deck more. <laughs> um, and I will say with this one, I did not connect as readily or as easily with this one as I did his Tarot's or the Abandoned Oracle. I connected immediately to this thing. This one, it still takes me a minute to really feel like I get something accurate out of it. If I haven't used it in a while, I really got to go through the cards again. It's a whole process. Now, the last oracle of his that I have that we will go over, the uh, oracle of lucid daydreams, garden of lucid daydreams oracle. I knew I messed up the title when I said it. Um, of course, I had to edge this one in purple because the backings are purple. He hasn't done that yet, and I thought that was a really fun touch, especially since this is such a bright and colorful deck as compared to all of his other decks. Now, these I read reversals with. They come out amazingly well. I tend to use more of a Lenormand Kipper style uh, of reading with these, and they come out amazingly well. And I just, I love it. All of the other decks are pretty much edged in black, except for uh, the tarots that I showed you guys. The tarots, uh, the Triomphi della Luna, I did not edge at all. I have not edged it at all. I think it looks fine the way it is. Never edged it. But this one was just begging to be edged in purple. <laughs> so I couldn't help it. I had to edge it in purple. Um... But yeah, this one I get really, really accurate readings with. Uh, it goes through the Garden of Lucid Daydreams as a place, and it goes through all the different seasons. So you even have um, a woman that personifies each season, and you get to see if you lay the cards out, you know, zero through whatever, um, you can see it go from spring to winter. So that's really cool. Like the whole, it captures all of the seasons in here. And it really is kind of like a place that feels immortalized, you know, like in your mind, you know, very fun, very accurate. And a lot of his work really does feel like it taps into something deep, right? That's why I was really disappointed in myself for not being able to connect to this one as much, the Pocket Oracle. But... 
I'm very much looking forward to more of his work. I, I love his art style. Uh, if you guys, I know that I've done uh, unboxings on a lot of these in the past, so you can check those out. And if there was one particular deck that you want me to do a deep dive on, or that you feel like I didn't talk about enough, we will. But with the Triomphi Della Luna deck, I will be doing a deep dive at the end of the month. I'll be unboxing it and then I'll be showing you because basically once you have the illustrated pips in here, it's literally going to be like a build your own deck, right? You're going to be like, okay, maybe I want illustrated pips with the beast pack. Maybe I want to use some of the extra cards that like the extra, um, uh, majors cards maybe I want to put those into the illustrated pips it's literally gonna be like a build your own deck type thing and I cannot wait to see how well the cards collide with each other or don't collide with each other and just really experiment and have fun I'm probably not gonna pick up another tarot deck for at least a month I'm just gonna play with this one and he's literally given no spoils spoilers about what the illustrated pips look like so I'm really really anxious to see when it gets here and I know I'm gonna be like scrolling through YouTube and checking to see if somebody got theirs before me so I can get a, a sneak peek because I, I will spoil it for myself you know what I mean but we'll see I might be the first person wouldn't that be fun anyway so I hope you guys enjoyed this artist spotlight he is probably uh, the artist that has put out the most decks that I have the most of like he is really prolific here as you guys can see so uh, again if there was a specific deck that you want to know more about please feel free to ask me but yeah I love all of his work that's how I connected with his work I found some things to be more accurate if I read them one way than if I read them another so I hope that this helped you guys if y'all were thinking about getting some of these and until next time happy shuffling happy dabbling and bye bye